Hey there. Have you heard of SOLID? It's an amazing DNA sequencing method that stands for sequencing by oligonucleotide ligation and detection. It's considered next-generation technology and produces millions of short sequence reads all in one go, making for a speedy and high-throughput sequencing of short read sequences. The way it works is through a clever two-base encoding system that translates the raw data generated by the sequencing platform into sequence data. What's great about SOLID is that it can sequence millions of sequences all at once and without breaking the bank. A DNA reading starts with a plastic tube with your spit. In your spit, there are cells with your DNA. The spit is processed, so there is only DNA left. This is called DNA extraction. Your DNA is of course very long, but in addition to the extraction, it is cut up in smaller bits. All your DNA is then placed on a so-called microarray, and this microarray is inserted into a reader. A microarray has short pieces of DNA attached to it already. They're called probes. If your DNA string matches a probe, the two will bind together very strongly. Other probes may not match your DNA. Using fluorescence, one can have the bound DNA emit light into the reader. There are many variations on how to do that exactly, but generally it means that we can have each light correspond to a specific genotype. The light can then be read with a high resolution digital camera and this way your spit sample can be translated into a list of what genotypes you have. Oh, solid. It's a fantastic tool that helps scientists sequence DNA in addition to transcriptomics and epigenomics. The process is quite fascinating. The scientists first create a library of DNA fragments, each of which they attach to a magnetic bead with a unique sequence that is identical for all fragments. This ensures that the starting sequence for each fragment is known and the same. Next, they attach two adapters to the fragment library and perform emulsion PCR, which produces clonal beads and amplifies the fragments. Finally, they deposit the beads on a glass slide and analyze them using digital imaging. It's amazing how technology can help us explore the intricacies of DNA. Primers hybridized to sequence adapter at the library template. Each base was queried by two labeled oligonucleotides, which have one of 16 specific dinucleotides. They used two bases encoding to decode platform data, each base pair of the probe is one of four possible colors. There are four dyes and four oligonucleotides for every dye. They use primers that attach to the special sequence to help a set of four fluorescently labeled probes compete for ligation to the sequencing primer. These probes work by analyzing the first and second bases in each ligation reaction to determine the specificity of the probe. The scientists perform multiple cycles of ligation, detection, and cleavage to determine the length of the read. The sequencing involves detection and removal of fluorochrome. After several cycles of ligation, they remove the extension product and reset the template with a primer that's complementary to the N1 position for a second round of ligation cycles. Scientists complete five rounds of primer reset for each sequence tag, which allows them to interrogate each base in two independent ligation reactions by two different primers. They use a two-base encoding system that assigns each unique pair of bases on the three-foot end of the probe one of four possible colors. For example, AA might be assigned to blue and AC to green. During sequencing, each base in the template is sequenced twice, and the resulting data are decoded using this system. For example, if they want to know the base at position 5, they would use primer number 2 in ligation cycle 2 and primer number 3 in ligation cycle 1 to get the information they need. A DNA reading starts with a plastic tube with your spit. In your spit, there are cells with your DNA. The spit is processed, so there is only DNA left. 
This is called DNA extraction. Your DNA is of course very long, but in addition to the extraction, it is cut up in smaller bits. All your DNA is then placed on a so-called microarray, and this microarray is inserted into a reader. A microarray has short pieces of DNA attached to it already. They're called probes. If your DNA string matches a probe, the two will bind together very strongly. Other probes may not match your DNA. Using fluorescence, one can have the bound DNA emit light into the reader. There are many variations on how to do that exactly, but generally it means that we can have each light correspond to a specific genotype. The light can then be read with a high resolution digital camera. In this way, your spit sample can be translated into a list of what genotypes you have. 